Good morning, everybody. Welcome to M Nation Coffee Talk. My name is Larry Wallace, and this is my wife, Stacy Wallace, and together we are the founders of M Nation. M Nation stands for Empowering Nations with the Truth of God's Word. And our sound just decided to come on. And my dog down here says he wants to be a part of the show. Uh, you know what? We have been run by dogs the last few days. We've got some pretty funny stories to tell you, as you can see in the picture of this video, some amazing stories uh, that I think will give you a great message today. If you're a part of our community, please go ahead and share this video, comment below. Tell us today, as we get into this topic, what is an area that you need help with when it comes to patience? We're gonna actually <laughs> continue on. Last week we talked about resonating with heaven, getting everything that heaven has in store for you. It's like a revelation that I'm still just absorbing, digging into. It's already done. Mm -hmm. Everything you need, want, healing, prosper, it's all done. Now we've just got to figure out how to pull heaven to earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on just earth yeah. as it is in heaven. But there's a way to receive. You've got to get into the flow of what's going on up there. So today we are talking about something we were faced with this weekend. Lord, grant me patience, mm -hmm. but hurry. Have you ever <laughs> said that? Like, okay, God, I want that part of the fruit of your spirit, but I need you to hurry. We're going to tell you a couple of stories that are pretty funny, uh, but tested our patience this weekend, but resulted in amazing blessing. And we're going to tell you about that. So today we're going to look at three keys that you must engage in order to access God's blessings and patience is right in the middle of all of it. So I want to encourage you today, please join our community if you're just tapping in for the first time. And uh, we'd love for you to hit that notification bell as well because that lets you know when we go live. We've always got a message, short message, every single morning throughout the week, Monday through Thursday. We've uh, been taking Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off because we're gearing up for what's going to be a whole new season. I know we've got up. lots of planning going on about what we're going to be doing next as it relates to our YouTube community. And um, so just be, <laughs> be ready because it's going to be good. Shift is happening in yes. the household. And, and too, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys watch on your mobile phone, your mobile device, and you may be saying to yourself, what bell are you talking about? Well, after you hit the subscribe button, then a bell appears, and that's the one that we're talking about. But if you're watching this on a desktop or your laptop, then it's literally right next to the subscribe button. So when you hit the bell, you get a notification that we have gone live. And as always, this can also be listened to on our podcast, mm -hmm. emwomen.com forward slash podcast or emnation.org forward slash podcast. You can go there and listen to it if you can't watch it on video. All right, so three tips or three important tips for being in the flow of God's best on earth as it already is in heaven. Here's the scripture of today, which gives you the tip, the three tips. It's already in there. Let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. That's Romans 12, 12. Let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. We're going to look at those three things from life experiences that we've gone through this weekend mm -hmm. that hopefully will encourage you as well as you tap into what God has for you. Okay. Number one, Stay in, abide in, remain in, dwell in joy. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, it's, it sounds simple. Sometimes it's hard. It's, Especially like when you're mad or when someone's done you wrong or... Or this. your time schedule is changed. <laughs> Or your kids don't empty the dishwasher. They disobey. Your husband leaves toothpaste in the sink and you've got a showing. I... Lord, grant me patience. <laughs> but hurry, we're in this season right now of selling our home. So it's like we get these calls and you've got one hour, which are, we keep a pretty clean house. But it's amazing how dirty men are. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? it's just, it's, uh, there's uh, just two things. Uh, just two things. Okay, the toilet is this big. I do not That's have That's a big hole. Okay, and stop. And the sink is about that big, and all it takes is a little extra water and getting it to go down. Lord, grant me patience, but hurry. 
Anyhow, so <laughs> I have my own issues, but we won't talk about this today. Yeah. Okay. Let's only talk about Larry's issues. So here's, here's the thing about patience. We are in this season right now where we are so ready to get our property, to be able to have transitional living and crisis pregnancy center and all these things. We want it right now. And we just keep going, Lord, grant us patience, but hurry. The second thing that we're really, really anticipating and excited for is selling this house and getting our RV so that we can just travel and be full time on the road and helping people when God says go, just to go. And so we're just, but the house has to sell for us to be able to do that. Unless you have an extra RV and you just want to send it our way, that would be awesome. Um, so anyhow, Lord, grant us patience, but hurry. And sometimes in the waiting that's when you get frustrated. So when we've done a lot of leadership development or business development coaching, a lot of times where you hit morale decay or morale, a drop in morale in, in corporate America is there's this gap between your ideal life or your ideal expectations and your reality. And in between where you really are sometimes people's gaps are like this <laughs> but where sometimes. you really are and where you want to be whether it's as a company whether it's as a person whether it's as a mom or dad this is the gap of depression mm. this is the gap of anxiety mm. this is the gap stress. of frustration mm -hmm. and stress and here's what i know for certain is the gap between here where you are and where God wants to take you. It's not no, we're gonna talk about this next, throughout the week, but maybe just not now. So how do you bridge the gap until you start to see the manifestation of what it is God's doing? These three tips will help you big time. Number one, stay in joy, dwell in joy. Galatians 5.22 says, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. We know that we're resonating with heaven, we're tapped in, we're in the IV of heaven's greatness when we walk in the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are able to go through the gap, the season where things seem to be frustrating or you're walking along and all of a sudden your kids still haven't cleaned up their room or life happens, you know you're doing good when you can remain in the fruit of the spirit or another scripture of course is first corinthians 13 4 remain in love mm -hmm. love what is love god is love so you know you're tapped in mm -hmm. god is love love is patient love is kind it does not envy does not boast it is not proud rude self-seeking taking no record of wrongs does not delight in evil but rejoices in good it always hopes always perseveres always love trusts. never always trusts love never fails. I love this one scripture reference. It says, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor. So if you're spending your days just dishonoring your boss, dishonoring your coworkers, dishonoring your president, dishonoring people, guess what? You're not connected because God is love. And so operating in that is a secret sauce to maintaining peace or resonating constantly, even before your reality hits your expectations. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a, that's a powerful, powerful tip. How do you remain in love? Remain in the fruit of the Spirit. You'll start to reflect God better. Yeah, and the more, time you spend, the more time that you spend with God, the more you're going to be like what, what we're talking about right now, the more you're going to start adopting the characteristics. In fact, you know, no different than, than when you're married to someone or you're, you're really close friends with someone. But like Stacy and I, for example, the more time that we spend together, the more time that we start dressing alike, the more time we start looking alike. And it's just because the more time, the closer you get with someone, this, you start adopting those same characteristics. Except for sometimes whenever they do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. We, we used to do different things. You used to watch different kinds of shows. And now yeah, like, it's like we're always watching the same stuff together. We have the same joys. We changed what we used to do because now we love each other. It's not, I don't feel under law no. to enjoy what you enjoy. I actually feel it's my privilege. And that's why a lot of people are like, I, why would God ask me to give all that up? Well, it's out of love. You love him so much that you start to change what you love. Yeah, it's not that you're, you're giving up to go down, you're giving up to go up. Like I, I remember when 
uh, before Stacy and I got married, for, for example, I used to go mountain bike riding all the time with my buddies. And that wasn't really something that Stacy enjoyed doing. I don't like bikes. <laughs> so she didn't really like the whole mountain bike thing, but she loved playing basketball. And you know what? I enjoyed playing basketball too. So I stopped going mountain bike riding all the time and started playing basketball with my wife more. And it was just a way for us to be able to bond and to do something that we both enjoyed together. I, I used to say to Larry, what is something that brings you great, great joy? And Larry's love language is acts of service. And so Larry loves things like going out and doing the lawn and doing the flowers. And the RV thing is a really, really big love and joy. And we could go the rest of our lives going, but I like a house, mm -hmm. but I like this stuff. Or I love you so much that I want us to spend life loving each other in the things that we love. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same thing about what it is to remain in joy, to let your hope keep you in joy. Why? Because in joy, when you become more like God, more like the fruit of his, his spirit, the more you're going to see that you don't have the impatience that you used to have. Now, number two is be patient in troubles. Remember, uh, Romans 12, 12 says, let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. So let's look at number two, be patient in troubles. Okay, so we're going to tell you a story about Emma. I don't know where she went, but she's gone. But right now she has a cone on her head. And we had a little situation this weekend that could have caused great frustration. But the story goes like this. So Emma... Uh, she's precious. Y'all know last week we talked to you that she, we thought she got out. <laughs> and um, so we went looking for six hours. Larry was out of town. I'm looking all of the neighbor, got my neighbors looking for. Ends up that she was under the bed, not feeling well. Well, we didn't know why she didn't feel well, but she threw up. And so um, we just kind of watched her. She was very lethargic for about 48 hours, just kind of walking around, not whining, not in pain, but just not feeling well. And then at close to midnight one night, we noticed that she had licked herself raw on one of her nipples. Can I say nipples? Okay. So licked herself raw a bad word. On, on one of her nipples and it opened it up like a wound. So we called and they said, just take her in in the morning. And we did. And they said that she had a cyst. Now, of course, the doctors have all these negative things that it could be this or it could be that. And we just, we resist sickness because part of resonance, there is no sickness in heaven. So if you get a diagnosis of sickness, you can accept it and receive it. And a lot of people would say, well, that's just reality, Stacy. Okay, or you, you can live in your reality, or you can go, you know what? That's what they said, all right, but I'm gonna still resonate with God's best. I'm gonna resonate with wholeness. I'm gonna resonate. So we took her in like you should do, and we got her checked out, and they said, you know, we need to draw blood. We needed this. It was going to be a lot of money for the things they wanted to do for her. And uh, they said, but we can't get to it till the 14th anyhow. So um, I said, you know what, kids, this is a great time. This is a great lesson for us to learn how to be patient and just trust God for a moment. We can't do anything about it right now. So let's ask God. He said he gives us dominion over the earth, over the things of the earth, over the fish, the beasts, the fowls of the air. So we prayed for sweet. <laughs> we prayed for sweet Emma, and we put this cone on her. So it's that she the cone of shame. It's not either. It's the <laughs> cone of life because it's keeping her from licking herself. Now, here's what's amazing. She's totally healed up. Yes. Now, we're going to keep it on her. We let it off every now and then, but we're going to keep it on her till she goes to her doctor's appointment. Why? Because we're using wisdom. Because whatever was bothering her was bothering her so much that it opened up into a wound. So she's now, that wound is closed and we're operating in wisdom while we believe that she's totally healed and while we believe for a miracle for her, right? And get ready for the doctors to be able to do some tests on her. So be patient in troubles. It doesn't mean that troubles won't come. So here's what happened the next morning. Okay, so that next morning we got up, we had to take her, it kind of put us off because the next day I had scheduled with Alexia, with my mom and Alexia that we were going to go thrift shopping all day. We were gonna first go to her favorite place. There's this little place that she likes to go called Neiman Marcus. It's this very hoity-toity lunch, Mariposa's, and they have a restaurant. And she likes, it's not even on their menu. It's just what they serve you before food comes. It's, it's like tea and crumpets. It's this little 
kind of like a soup Hot broth. Broth. Yeah. Um, but and, it tastes really good. And crumpets. Mm -hmm. So she loves stopping by there and getting this broth and crumpets. So that was our plan. We're going to go there and then we're going to go thrifting all day. Well, then this thing happens with Emma. Breaks up the schedule. A little frustrating. We're waiting on Emma. We're waiting to get into the doctor. And um, it puts us off schedule. Uh-oh. Now, sometimes when you're off schedule, you can get frustrated and it's not what you wanted or somebody pulls in front of you and they're going slower than you want to go or whatever the case might be. Sometimes God's off schedule is actually on schedule to get you to a blessing. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Sometimes when your schedule is interrupted and you get frustrated, you don't realize it, but you're trying to get there and that the blessing is here. And God's trying to get a blessing to you and he's saying, slow down. Like it might be that you're in traffic and you're wanting to get around that guy and you're wanting to go faster, but God put that, allowed that car to be there because there's a cop up there to slow you down just long enough. He's trying to get you a blessing. So think about this right now. So Emma, anyhow, Emma, we, we, we take her that morning. The night before I had Alexia, we were all laying in bed together. And I said, Alexia, why don't you pray for us before we go to bed? So she prays and she caps her prayer off with, and God, let us all find a hundred dollar bill tomorrow <laughs> because she's 17. We're going thrift shopping. She needed some money for shopping. So um, we go about our morning. We take care of Emma. Everybody's happy. We go to Neiman Marcus parking lot. We get out of the car and there's a lady. And this lady is very disturbed. She's probably in her late seventies and we, get there or maybe early 70s maybe she's in her 50s because if she watches this I'm probably in her late 20s <laughs> so um just based upon how long she said that they had been in real estate and all this i was just thinking she had to be in her 70s so anyhow we get out of our car and she's pacing and very upset <laughs> and so i walk over to her now i could be like oh no we were we're gonna get our crumpets and our tea we're gonna we have to get inside but i walked over to her and i said are you okay and she's crying. She's very disturbed. She's locked her keys in the car. She lives about 45 minutes to an hour away. So just getting another key is not a quick option. And you could tell she was very disturbed. And I just walked over and I said, oh my goodness, can I pray for you? And she goes, no, 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 it's okay. And I said, well, no, I'm gonna pray for you anyhow. <laughs> so I prayed for her. And as I prayed for her, my mom and Alexi are there. We're all praying together. And I said, well, you know what? We're right here. She had a brand new Lexus. Um, we, I said, we're right near our Lexus dealership. Why don't I call them and see if they can send you someone just to open up your car? And um, you could tell she was very, so I walked away and I started dealing with, uh, with Lexus and getting the crew to come out. And it took about an hour in the park. It was a hot day. It was 104 degrees that day. She's hot. We kept saying, come inside. But she said, no, 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 I'm just all good crying. And, I don't want to go inside because everybody in there knows me. And so we just stayed out with her. Well, my mom and Alexia were so patient. They just kept loving on her. Now, Alexia, obviously, she's got an agenda. She never said a word. She went into the car. And I think she's probably doing a TikTok or something. <laughs> but she sat in the car, put the air conditioning on. Being while patient. we She was being patient while we helped this lady. She knew this is what we do as a family. We don't just put thrift shopping or our agenda before an a golden opportunity. And really, this is number two. Don't miss golden opportunities. Mm -hmm. Impatience will keep you from golden opportunities. So that was a golden opportunity. We didn't know it was a golden opportunity. We were just doing good, right? So we love on her. Long story short, it all gets, I get off the phone and I come back to the lady and she pulls out of her purse a hundred dollar bill. And she said, please take this for that little girl. And my mom's pushing it back. And my mom's, oh, no, no, this is what we do. We don't do it for pay. And I'm thinking the same thing. We, uh, no, of course we're not taking your money. And she kept pushing it and pushing it. And then the Holy Spirit said, I'm trying to give Alexia a blessing. Mm. I'm answering her prayer last night. Take the money. Mm. So I took the lady's hand and I said, you know what? I want to tell you a story. I said, that little girl that's in that car, last night she prayed and I told her about the prayer. And I said, this inconvenience right now could be an intersection of heaven touching earth and you just might be the portal. She started crying. She goes, oh, please let her take it. Please let her take it. So we took that $100 bill. She got her car opened. Her daughter came. 
But here's the amazing thing. Had we have been impatient and just gone on to our business, we would have missed not only the $100 bill, which the smaller, smallest, but Alexia loved it. She shopped that day at thrift shopping. This is one of my thrift shirts I got for $2. <laughs> um, actually, Alexia bought it for me. She had like $46 left over at the end of the day because when you thrift shop, it's also inexpensive. Anyhow, we would have not only missed the $100, but we would have missed being a blessing to someone else. More importantly, we would have missed the intersection of heaven touching earth. Heaven is touching earth every single day, but don't let your impatience keep you from being in the pathway or recognizing it when it's there. Man, that is so powerful. I'm telling you, if you guys just catch that, it's gonna change your life. So good. Such a great story. So, and I, I love how God just used that opportunity to speak to our girl too. I did, and it, we, we sat down, we said, Alexa, do you realize what just happened? God just answered your prayer. Mm -hmm. Did you catch it? It was mm -hmm. beautiful. She called her brother. She told him about it. Pray for opportunities like that, for God to prove himself strong <clears throat> in your children. Okay, number three, pray at all times and never, never give up. So we're talking about three things that you can do in order to stay in God's best, the flow of God's best of heaven touching earth. Lord, grant me patience, but hurry. Number three, pray at all times and never give up. It's very easy to get impatient mm. when you get into your flesh. You know, it reminds me of that. Uh, you guys have all seen the cartoon of the guy who's underground. He's, he's mining. He's using his pickaxe to get to this stash of diamonds that he just knows that's there. And so you have this uh, one part of the cartoon where the guy just gives up and walks away. And he's like that close to the diamonds. And then you have this other guy who's just going all the way. But that's, that's what reminds me of, is like, mm -hmm. don't give up, right? If God's given you a dream on something and he's told you to do something, just because you don't see it in your timing doesn't mean that you should give it up. Keep going. Keep pressing. Let me speak just for a second to our business friends and those that follow us who have your own business or maybe you're running a corporation. Patience is so valuable in being able to go from your reality to your expectations because right here is where most people quit. It's where depression sets in, anxiety, stress. It just didn't happen the way you thought it was gonna happen. Things didn't turn out the way you thought they were gonna turn out. In that gap, you can grind more, you can press more, you can work harder, which is the way of the flesh. It's okay, those are all good, but why not get into the fast flow? Remember in, was it Nemo? when he got in with the turtles. Right. And it was like surfing, dude. Right. right? Yeah. Get into the flow. He got into the current. The current. The current. The current is resonating with heaven. Yes. The current is being in the fruit of the spirit. The current is having patience. Mm. When you do that, how do you get in the current? Pray at all times mm. and never, never give up. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. That means impatient. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, put your request before God like Alexia did, and then trust Him. Pray and never give up. Pray and never give up. Such a powerful, powerful message. Why don't you pray for us? You know, I feel today that there's some of you that you have been asking God for something and you haven't seen the manifestation of what you've been asking for. Or maybe life threw you a curveball and you were like, whoa. That's not the way I thought this was going to end up. And so you've been accepting the reality and it's been causing you stress because you still have this expectation. Mm -hmm. I want to speak to you today and I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus that you are patient today, that you are walking in the flow, in the current of God's blessings, that today as you align with his spirit, the fruit of his spirit, the proof that his spirit is number one in your life. As you walk in that, that there is a breakthrough for you. There's a miracle for you. There's a blessing for you. There's something that God has in store for you that you could not do yourself. There's, there's a person in the pathway, a business in the pathway, a, a circumstance in the pathway that if you are not in the current, it's going to go right past you. But I decree today that you are in the flow under the spout where the blessings come out. And the way to stay in that flow is pray. 
live in joy, and maintain patience in all things. God, we thank you for Romans 12, 12 today. God, let it be the secret sauce that puts us right in the sweet spot of your blessings, of your favor, of your goodness. God, we thank you that today, everyone that's watching, God, that they are in the blessing of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. God, that they're the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. They don't have to strive to be number one in their office. They just need to flow, get in the current of your blessings, and God, they're automatically going to rise like cream to the top. Thank you, Father God. Give us patience, Lord. Give us patience. Help us to live in the fruit of your spirit. Abide in joy. Walk in love today. We, even when there's hatred all around us, let us be overwhelmed by love today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And just know this. When you, when you ask God to grant you patience, give you patience, Ooh. sometimes... That means that you're going to have opportunities to exercise that patience. So remember this video and just be at peace. Pass the test. Pass the test. Even if your dog wears a comb. <laughs> Even if your spouse does something that just gets on your nerves or pushes your buttons or whatever it may be, pass the test. Lord, grant me patience. And hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Please leave us comments. Let us know where you need to have prayer to have more patience. We want to pray for you today. We go back in. We always love the comments and make sure that you have subscribed to our channel. Listen to the uh, podcast if you want to hear this again. Absorb this. Really, really listen to it. Look up the scriptures and then, of course, leave us a comment. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.